Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Subhub Podcast. I'm Danny Moreno. And I'm MK Sullivan. And today we're going to cover a bit of U.S. championship stuff. Um, we've had two U.S. championships in the last two weekends, uh, one at Loon Mountain and one at Cirque Series Snowbird, um, as well as just kind of catching up because it feels like, I know it hasn't been, but it feels like it's been a month since we've recorded something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, I totally agree. I was like, when was the last time we recorded? It was probably only like a week ago or two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's been super fun following along these two U.S. championships earlier in the year. If you all don't remember, we had a giveaway, um, giving away some entries to both the Loon Mountain Mountain Race and the Cirque Series Snowbird Race. Um, And yeah, we had two U.S. championships back to back. We'll go over which other ones are coming up next. But before we dive into the results of both of those, MK, how are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> it's uh, It's been a while since I have run a race that short. I had a ton of fun doing it, um, but I'm definitely like a little, my nervous system's a little tired. <laughs> I ran pretty hard up that hill, so... And then you have to run hard downhill. There just is no option. So you're going to beat the crap out of your body, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, for those who don't know, MK actually participated herself in the second U.S. championship, which was at Cirque Series, and she garnered herself a fifth place finish. Pretty good. Pretty cool. (laughs) Pretty cool. In the midst of uh, a training block, which you haven't said what you're training for, but in the midst of a big training block right now. Yeah, no, it was... uh it was cool to feel really good climbing. I was like worried that I was going to feel kind of flat, but I felt really good actually. And the views were great. So if you guys haven't done a circuit series race, I highly recommend it. And also my new opinion, um, maybe it's a hot take, maybe it's not, is that you can't call yourself a mountain runner unless you've done a circuit series race or a sky runner race. Otherwise you're just a trail runner. <laughs> Which is totally fine, you know, to each their own. But yeah, if you want that mountain runner um, title, then yes, I would agree with that for sure. Or a yeah. European race if you have the resources to get over there. Yeah, I just, I'm definitely a trail runner. <laughs> <I'm being laughs> honest. You know, what's funny is I feel like I've had this conversation with a couple people lately because talking about... um for better or for worse, like the obsession that one can have with like consistency, perfectionism, but also like becoming obsessed with like a certain race or terrain. And like, I know deep down inside, I am a hundred percent a trail runner. Like that is what I'm really good at. And that's what, like when I first started trail running that I think that's what I loved. But over time, I just am fascinated by the mountain races. And so I've made myself into like a decent mountain runner. Yeah. 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 And I'm, I think it's something that I could be better at, obviously, if I did more of it. But uh, yeah, I, it got a little heady there for a little bit. And I was like, <laughs> I am like a little nervous about this. <laughs> but we'll talk about that when we talk about the course. How are you doing? Um, I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing okay. I'm No, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I feel like I've been experiencing, uh, I don't know if you've read those books, a series of unfortunate events. Did you read those growing up? Yeah, Yeah. I really, I really liked those books. Um, but for anyone who has read those books, it's about like these adopted kids and just weird stuff keeps happening in their life that they can't explain and ultimately like leads to this big mystery. But anyways, I've been having these things happen. Some that are very explainable, some out of my control, et cetera. Um, but I think just coming into some knowledge base that some stuff that I was feeling between like Zagama or canyons, Zagama and Broken Arrow probably were due not all to, but largely some imbalances, uh, not nutritionally, just uh, like iron stuff. Training. Yeah. 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 It's like, yeah, it was really getting to my head that like I thought really believed I hadn't overtrained. Um, but my body is very resilient. So overtraining comes in like different syndromes. And like because I've 
like you, like I've ran my entire life. So my body's pretty durable. Like it can handle a lot of pounding. Yeah. Um, and when the body can handle a lot of pounding, like something else gives if you aren't. So if you're overtraining, it's not, it's usually that you're not doing too much, but you're not recovering enough. And so my version of that was like, I wasn't taking enough iron to compensate for how much training I was doing. I was just taking as much iron as I normally do. And so slowly over, you know, six weeks became iron deficient. Um, And so anyways, it was very enlightening to learn this as much of a bummer as it was, because I feel like immediately my response was, oh, I had wasted opportunities. Um, So I've just been really working on reframing that for my mind. Um, And yeah, just the nice thing is it's very fixable. Uh, So I've been working on that. And then I was straining my butt a couple of days ago. (laughs) <laughs> that was another event slash kind of dislocated my shoulder according to my chiropractor um so things are trending in the right direction mostly um so anyways today I had a good run and I'm looking forward yep <laughs> I'm curious are you uh are you on a like a pill iron supplement or are you now taking liquid iron to try to catch up I'm on a pill um but Basically what I'm doing is I'm doubling on long runs and hard workouts to not yeah. like get too much GI distress. I did learn about this thing called the lucky iron fish. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. It's like this. So I just bought it. I'm hoping that helps too, but basically it's like this, it's mostly carbon, but it's almost like an iron skillet, right? Like if you cook in an iron skillet, like that's supposed to give you iron in all your food. Yeah. And so this lucky iron fish apparently we'll see if it helps too um you can put it in your food or like boil some water with it with some acid and that's um better than taking a pill or stuff so we'll see better absorption or something yeah yeah i think so yeah because even with supplements you know i mean we won't get too much into it there's like iron by by glycinate and then ferrous sulfate and gluconate there's like yeah there's it all depends on like, do <laughs> <laughs> there's all these zabazuza iron um oh. yeah but yeah it's all those fun things and then yeah I'm just glad honestly what I'm holding on to is I'm glad I found out now versus like OCC having something similar a similar feeling where like I'm just gassed really early on and being yeah. like I can't I don't know what's going on yeah yep it's really interesting because you and I have talked about this, but I'm in the complete opposite boat right now <laughs> where <laughs> my iron is at like 200 and I'm trying to figure out how to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> we got to drain you. Take your blood. <laughs> you can have some of mine, maybe. Dude, yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's doping, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we start oh. having just really crazy performances, people will know why <laughs> we're just sharing blood. Um, <laughs> no, no. Um, but yeah, that's how things are going. I'm trying to think if there's been anything else. I think that's pretty much it. Just training for OCC, honestly, heads down, no more races. Do you have any races coming up? Yes, I am. Uh, I guess by the time this episode comes out, it'll be like two days from, uh, then, but I'm running speed goat 50 K on Saturday. So it'll be like my last race just like a really good uh long effort in the mountains it's really hard to get 50k with 11,000 feet in the U.S. you know and so um that kind of the easiest way to do it is to hop in a speed up yeah that's really cool that's a race that's still on my bucket list that I haven't done I, even though it's like in a resort I've heard it's very beautiful and like you said it's like you could make that route for yourself but usually it's not a fun route you're like redoing the same hills or something yeah you're looping back to the car to pick up food and stuff and yeah there's eight stations (laughs) out there so I don't have to do that (laughs) eight station long run love those yes and uh I'm gonna practice my poles hopefully too so um because I think the hardest part about poles is uh eating food while you're using them (laughs) that's so true do you have a quiver I do yeah and I'm just really bad at like wanting to put them back and take them back out but I got better poles that come off of my hands easier. And so I think eating is going to be a little bit better, but yeah, I think it'll be good to practice it in like an actual race setting. Which poles are you using? Just out of curiosity. 
I'd have to look it up uh, and tell you later, but they're luckies. Oh, okay. They're the lucky, um, like one size race pole. Yeah. Interesting. And do you have the gloves yeah. that they click in and out of? Yeah. Nice. And my practice poles are just old enough that they're sticky. So I can't like get them out as easily. And so using the race poles is a lot better. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Well, yes. if you're at Speed Goat, definitely say hi to MK. Um, as per there is prize money in the 50K. I believe it's 2000. I think so for first place. 1000, something like that. Check out our sub hub headlines. The prize money is in there. Um, but yeah, if you're just in the Utah area and want to see a great race, go and cheer. This is also at Snowbird, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a 21K on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I believe there's a 28K. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So great event put on by the speed goat. I think that's his actual literal nickname. Yeah. Carl, Carl Metzler. Metzler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, go check out speed. Goat. There's bound to be some really good events. Um, anything else before we dive into. One thought I did have that I want to share before I forget to share it. When we talk about Cirque is when I was climbing up the Ridge to the first summit, um, one of the guys that I passed as I passed him was like, hell yeah, doing sub hub stuff. And <laughs> I just shout out to you. That really got me to the top. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, you have to keep your status, you know, if you want to yeah. say the code. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought that it. was so funny doing sub hub stuff. I love that. Another potential <laughs> great t-shirt, <laughs> yeah. um, many t-shirt models that we should probably try and get out uh, doing stuff up stuff. I love that. <laughs> yes. So I'm sorry. I don't know your name, but thank you for that. That was very, very cool. <laughs> Appreciated. Mucho appreciado. Um, all right. Well, before we dive into these two U.S. championship races, here is a message from one of our sponsors. Hey, all. Danny here professional trail runner and co-host of the Subhub podcast. Last year after getting sick before a big race, I started looking into natural ways to boost my immune system. So I embarked on a little research journey, trying out a few different options. And you know what? I found myself reaching for one set of products again and again, and that was Beekeepers Naturals. And guess what? They are now a partner of the pod. Founded with a mission to reinvent the medicine cabinet, Beekeepers Naturals offers an array of immune-boosting products free from harmful chemicals and artificial ingredients. So if you're looking for a natural option to boost your immune system, consider trying Beekeepers Naturals products. And be sure to use the code SUBHUB20 for 20% off of all of your orders at beekeepersnaturals.com. Now back to the episode. Okay. All right. Well, I think we should start with the one that happened first, which is Loon Mountain Race. Uh, this happened on July 7th, and this was a six-mile race and was the USATF Vertical Mountain Running Championship. The race goes up approximately 3,000 feet within the six miles. Um, unfortunately, or there's no World Mountain Running Championships this year, but instead the top two finishers each uh, earned a spot on a race team or a team USA team. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why that's so hard for me to say. Uh, they're racing in October in Italy, which is really cool at the Lagoon kilometer vertical. I actually haven't heard about this race, but every race in Italy is beautiful. So I'm sure this will be beautiful too. Um, and this actually is the final for the world mountain running association world cup. So this is the Valsier world mountain running cup. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of great competition at this race. So, um, as far as the course goes, do you want to say anything else? Sorry. Yeah. I was trying to open the Strava, but my, uh, computer is apparently moving really slow, but yeah, it was 6,000 feet or sorry, six miles, somewhere around 3000 feet. And I didn't know this really when, uh, we were talking about it prior, but apparently there were like two decent downhills in the race and they're not like flowy they are you're running down a new hampshire ski slope which is just lumpy grass <laughs> and like pretty sketchy and so um that seemed to be like kind of the crux of the course for some people 
Um, also, apparently, Lauren Gregory took the entire elite women's field <laughs> off course. <laughs> oh, no. So they ran, like, a slightly different course than the men did. Like, they still got there in five and a half miles with 3,000 feet or whatever, but they did not run the actual course. Okay. How did they do that? <laughs> I That's... don't know. That makes so much more sense because when I was looking at the results – she like the third place woman ran 10 minutes faster than last year third place she like she was third place yeah. this year and last year and she ran 10 minutes faster and I was like for an uphill six mile race I was like holy moly they were cooking if they're taking yeah. 10 minutes off so that makes a lot more sense I mean I didn't doubt I was like wow they just like went they for were hammering it. they're hammering but that does make slightly more sense. <laughs> yeah, especially because like Joe Gray won in 49.30 and Lauren was uh, first female in 53.18. Like that's pretty close for a six mile uphill race. Yeah. Okay. This is making a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. She would have placed six overall in the men's race, which wouldn't, su- again, it wouldn't surprise me, but it's like, yeah. yeah, it like adds up just a little bit more. Wow. Okay. Good job, Lauren. <laughs> I'm so curious where they took the wrong turn. Yeah, I uh, I saw that she took a wrong turn, like on her Strava, and I was like, oh, maybe she just like turned around and went back. But then Emily, one of my athletes who raced, was telling me that like the entire top twenty or something went the wrong way. I mean, yeah, when you're that close to one another, it's like yeah. you're just you're just following. You're not even wanting to think about which way to turn. And when the race is that short, too, you're like, all right, we're going this way. <laughs> yeah dang well lauren uh sorry on the women's side lauren she ran she ran in 2022 and she won that year so congrats to lauren this is her second u.s title because i believe that was also a u.s championship that year um i think this is one of her first trail races this year it is her first yeah she was um hurt at the beginning of the year and then uh was focused on track or sorry hurt at the beginning of because she graduated last year right in 2023 then she was hurt all fall hurt all spring but then kind of like came back for track just finished her track season at the trials and then loon mountain two weeks later was her first trail race since i think thailand yeah that's pretty wild i forget i mean she was at the trials yeah she made it past the first round and then ran 1544 so really cool to see her starting to transition very curious like what other races she has in her calendar this year because personally I'd love to see her at Sierra's now just basically the rest of the Golden Trail World Series races um so hopefully this gave her some good confidence that her track speed is going to translate over very well yeah I talked to her a little bit before Loon and she was telling me that based on the fact that she just doesn't know where she she probably knows where she is now but she didn't know where she was like she wasn't really signing up for much yet she was just gonna kind of see how things went and like play the season by ear so cool well yeah Yeah. shout out to lauren um really cool seeing her along with anna gibson doing the olympic trials slash trail year uh very reminiscent of grace and murphy the last olympic cycle i think that was in 2021 when it was the year yeah. after um second place was rachel tomajic um this was the first she was one of a handful of athletes to commit to the double she got second here uh rachel has been on a couple usa teams and yeah just congrats on another strong performance yeah so consistent Third is Amber Zimmerman um, from Pennsylvania. Fourth, Ava Thurston from Vermont. Fifth, Hannah Rowe from Massachusetts. Sixth, Casey Enman, a classic from Vermont. Still crushing it. Still crushing Um, it. Seventh is Kayla Lamb from Massachusetts. Eighth, Lindsay Pirano from New York. Ninth, Haley Halfman from Colorado. And tenth, Emily Clark from Nevada. Yeah. Casey Ensman is 44 um so that's really cool to still see her (laughs) mixing it in the top 10 and then uh Ava Thurston who was fourth and Hannah Rowe who was fifth they were both um fourth and sixth at Loon last year so really cool to see them coming back to this race as it was a USA championship this year and then on the men's side 
Um, we'll go through the results first before diving into uh, a gentleman who we wanted to give a little bit more highlight to. But the Joe Gray, at a ripe age of 40 years old, still out here winning USATF championships. Crushing everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is really cool. It looks like it was a little uh, bit of a close race with Tyler McCandless uh, out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, really cool. Tyler like jumps in and out of trail and mountain races and he's always a crusher. So congrats to Tyler. Third was Jonathan Aziz, from also from Colorado Springs. He was... Um, first last year at Pikes Peak Marathon, and he was also on the world's team last year for the 45K. Um, he earned a spot at Formidable. So really cool to see him on the podium there. Fourth, uh, the tried and true Andy Wacker, head of the trail team. Congrats, Andy. And fifth was Garrett Cochran from Salt Lake City, former U.S. champ last year at Breakpoint, or Breakneck, sorry. Breakneck, yeah. Um, sixth, Eric Blake from Connecticut, 45 years old so that's really cool to see him in there as well uh seventh was Bihan Mazereri Bazeri Mazereri. from Massachusetts eighth Grant Colligan from Golden Colorado ninth Liam Miro from Portland Oregon and 10th Philip Royer from Boston Massachusetts so a bit more from the like Colorado sorry <laughs> oh, <see>. keep going um, <laughs> The first four were from Colorado, and in total they had five, whereas on the women's side it was a lot more East Coasters. Um, so that was kind of interesting to see. Yeah. Should we dive into Joe Gray's 25th U.S. championship win? <laughs> yes, yes. We uh, Like we said, like huge congrats to Lauren, but we did want to dive a little bit more into Joe. I mean, 25 wins. That's insane. Yes. He's uh, definitely the best mountain runner and arguably even maybe trail runner like the U.S. has ever seen. He, 25 championships is a lot. His first U.S. title was in 2009. He has won a variety of U.S. titles from mountain to 30K. I didn't know this, but he's won a 50K road championship, snowshoe championship, club cross country championship. Like the dude has done it all. He's also a 37-time USA team member. He's made 15 consecutive teams from 2008 to the present. He was the 2016 and 2019 World Mountain Champion and the first American to win Challenge Delena. And it seems like he's not even close to being done. <laughs> yeah, that's super impressive. And when we say, like, the best American mountain trail runner, we're mostly saying, like, at a short distance because – Something that I think we both have really respected about Joe is like, he never went longer. Like he just stayed in this lane that he's, he loves obviously, and is exceptional at one of the best to ever do it. Um, and it's just really cool because in trail and mountain running, it's just so common all the time that people are like, when are you going to move up? When are you going to move up? And Joseph Gray is a concrete sub hub member for life. <laughs> which yeah. is really cool and I mean he'll be on another U.S. team this year going to this race in Italy so congrats to him yeah and Joe just keep doing what you're doing for as long as you want to do it <laughs> um because honestly for me like since I've entered the sport sport Joe Gray has won numerous of those U.S. titles been on those teams and for so long he's been slightly unchallenged I think because people would naturally move to the longer distances but like this podcast highlights and with more people coming into the sport getting interested in it it is really cool to see Joe Gray be Joe Gray but also see these younger athletes who have looked up to him have heard about him starting to also carry their own own torches because I don't think he's quite ready to pass like the torch I think there's multiple tor multiple torches wow that's really hard to say um <laughs> and honestly I mean sorry if I hope this is a compliment Joe but like it's very um Tom Brady like right like Tom Brady was the go actively being the go and then you had these other quarterbacks like um what's it called Kansas City why can't I think of his name 
Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes um, coming in who like have looked up to Tom Brady their entire life. And now they are competing against Tom Brady and like beating Tom Brady, um, but also getting beat by Tom Brady. And obviously Tom Brady <laughs> is retired now, but it just reminds me of that. And um, it also reminds me of Jenny Simpson. Like she always was rising to the occasion in the women's 1500 and was such a beacon and such a role model for so many young women for a decade and some. Um, but she was always there, like still competing until she finally like decided to try out the marathon. But yeah, anyways, I just yeah. think it's cool. No, it's cool to see him still on top too. Yeah. yeah. So, so congrats, congrats, Joe, congrats, Joe and Tyler, um, assuming they both accept their spots and Lauren and Rachel, who will both com- be all competing in Italy in October. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Never Second. Although they are a relatively new brand in the space, Never Second has been working with some of the biggest names in trail running over the last couple of years, like UTMB champs Katie Scheid and Jim Wamsley. Never Second makes fueling easy with their modular system that allows you to create the exact carbohydrate formula for your activity. Their products are meant to be mixed and matched so that you can have 30, 60, 90, or even 120 grams of carbs per hour. I used Never Second in my recent second place finish at the Canyons 100K, where I also snagged a golden ticket. Despite being pretty nervous and nauseous at the start of the race, I was able to get down all of my nutrition because of the easy consistency and light flavors of Never Second products. I drank 90 grams of carbs over 90 minute increments and supplemented with one C30 an hour. I alternated between the C90 mix and a three scoop C30 mix to get a little bit more sodium every bottle. I also alternated my gels with a C30 plus that included caffeine so that I wouldn't get too tired as the race went on. I never experienced flavor fatigue or an upset stomach for the entirety of the 100K. If you want to try Never Second, just head to neversecond.com. That's N E V E R, the number two, dot com, and use code SUBHUB25 for a 25% discount on all your orders. Then we have the double hitter July 13th, Cirque Series Snowbird. Um, it was like, it was funny to listen to the DJ talk all week because, um, or the whole day that we were there, because he kept saying like, if this is your first time running a Cirque series, why did you choose this race? It's the hardest one. Um, and so it's cool that that's the one that they chose for the, the U.S. championships. And obviously part of it was that um, it made sense for the back-to-back weekend, but Snowbird is like a surprisingly long mountain race. It ended up being... Um, let me pull up my Strava here. 8.9 miles, so almost nine miles. Oh, wow. uh, thirty, Almost 3,700 feet of gain. Um, so it's a, a big boy of a race, honestly, for a sub-ultra. Yeah. Why do you, how do you think the other races compare to that one? Is it just this one's steeper? This one's a bit steeper, but also longer. Um, gotcha. A lot of them are like right around 10K and like 2,500 feet of vert. And this one is, uh, yeah almost nine miles with 3,700 feet of vert. So yeah, well, I definitely, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, especially looking at the times and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, compared to, I mean, geographically, it makes sense. Like Loon is on the East coast. So you're going to have slightly more East coast runners, you know, aside from just naturally, uh, the men's race having a lot of Colorado contenders, And looking at both the women's and the men's races, Utah showed up like even some kids that I I mean, they're not kids, young men and women who have just (laughs) graduated. Um, Utah showed up uh, with definitely a couple of grads and some athletes that personally uh, we are very both excited about to see what they kind of decide to do next. Um, But as far as on the men's side, Christian Allen comes up, shows up takes the win, wins almost by a minute. Um, It seems like he was slightly disappointed with Broken Arrow just based on his post. Like, he was a good sport about it, like shared, you know, videos and stuff like that. Um, But he was fourth in the VK, which was a very strong showing. Uh, Did get out sprinted by Mika within like the last five, ten feet of that race, which is a bit brutal. (laughs) And then... Uh, honestly, I thought the 23K would be more of his sweet spot, and he ended up coming in 13th in a great field. Um, 
but again, you know, expected to him to be, you know, closer to that top five, top six, but yeah, ends up taking the win. Um, but second place Hawk call, he was six that broken arrow. So he had a real in the 23 K he had a great race there. I tried yeah. finding out more about him and he looks like he was an ex OCR racer, which history shows, you know, John Alvin, John Alvin, yeah. <laughs> John Alvin. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm very excited to see. He signed up for Mammoth Trail Fest right now. Like if he signed up for anything else, because those are two really good results this summer so far. Yeah. And like, just to put into perspective, kind of how uh, competitive this race was, I know that Cam Smith wasn't super happy with his race here, but Cam Smith ended up 10th at this race. And it should be noted that this was also the collegiate championship for mountain running for the year. So that's why oh. you're seeing a lot of like younger kids um, in the race as well. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. That's yeah. cool. Um, so, oh, I was just going to go through the top 10 yeah, unless you had something ahead. else to say. No, cool. That was it. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, Christian Allen in first, Hot Call in second, Zachary Erickson in third, Mason Copey in fourth, Taylor Stack in fifth, Anthony Williams in sixth, Seth Demore in seventh, David Kennedy in eighth, Cole Campbell in ninth and Cam Smith in 10th. Yeah. It's basically Utah, 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 New York, uh, <laughs> which Mason Coffey was 11th in the 46 K at Broken Arrow. Another great showing there. Taylor Stack was fourth at the Broken Arrow 23 K and he was fifth. So like hot call and Taylor Stack, like got my eyes on Turn them going up. forward. Yeah, for sure. Um, from Salida and then you have Utah Colorado 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 <laughs> I wonder if Utah and Colorado have like a rivalry that we don't know about yet I mean probably <laughs> probably they're probably yeah and California is probably in there too but we don't know we don't know we're like yeah I mean I'm in Nevada but like the oh, that's true. are so far removed from like the yeah. Rockies and the Wasatch that that we probably think there's a rivalry, but there's not. Yeah, 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 exactly. They're like, who, who are those people? Yeah, they're like, Kala what? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before we move on to the women's race, the the main thing I wanted, or another thing that I want to highlight, lot of lot of youngins in this race. 26, 25, 23, 26, 25. That's the top five. Um, and then we have 28, 39. A young 39. I mean, Seth Demore is kicking butt. 25, 25, 28. So, I mean, again, talking about, like, that Joe Gray, multiple people to hold the torches, like, let's look at these results, like, in six months from now. Um, Because I think there is some really great global talent in here that hasn't had a chance to compete, like, overseas. Or vice versa. Like, BA had some global talent um, with Patrick and Umbogo in the mix. So, yeah, congrats, guys. Yeah, and then on the women's side, Grayson Murphy wins her fifth national title. Fifth? Um, wow. Yeah, that's what she said on Instagram, which I guess makes sense because she's made three teams, I think, but only, like, wasn't able to go to Thailand. But I think she made multiple events, possibly, on those teams. Oh, to- yeah, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. What is Because, she- like, last year she won, she won vertical and up-down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, last year she had two, and she this won year, she said one. This year one. Nar-nar. And then she probably would have had to qualify for Patagonia too, whatever that was. That was Narnar. Oh oh yeah, probably something in 2019. Oh, she would have qualified. Um, no, for she would have had to run something for Thailand, right? We should probably know this. Sorry, Grayson. <laughs> Sorry, Grayson. But congrats so on your we, fifth win. Yeah, we know that it's Narnar. Um, the two, two centipede. Sunapee races last year and now this race we're just missing your missing there. Your but congrats well on her way to 25 wins she'll be there before <laughs> we know it <laughs> yes and then uh coming back for a second weekend in a row Rachel Tomajic gets second again um followed closely by Laurel Moyer who I think is a name that we should be looking for here in the near future she just won the Brighton race uh not too many weeks ago and then was third here against two of the best mountain runners you know that we have have made multiple teams um fourth place alexa aragon fifth place myself sixth place sydney peterson another young gun she's like i think 24 ran for colorado state 
Seventh, Giselle Slotboom. Eighth, Andy Cornish. Ninth, Oakley Olson, who I believe was maybe the youngest athlete to run on the women's side that day, but I could be remembering that incorrectly. And then 10th place was Flannery Davis Love. These are some and, sick names. <laughs> yeah, I like the name Flannery Davis Me Love. Me too. That's so cool. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that was it. Yeah, I just, um, it looks like Sydney, Andy, and Oakley are all part of the trail team too. So again, just huge kudos to Andy. We love what you're doing with the trail team, bringing up this young talent, bringing them to cool races like this where they get exposed to some athletes who have already, you know, been in the sport a couple of years, not a super long race, um, something to dip their toes in for some uh, very great mountain running and yeah that was the Cirque series race yeah so the top u.s male and top u.s female at snowbird received an auto spot on the u.s vertical mountain running team also in chiavena italy the same race as the people who qualified the weekend before so christian allen and grayson murphy will be on that team if they both decide to take it yes and they will be joining joseph gray and tyler mccandless and then lauren uh lauren gregory and then rachel tomajic uh, so that's really cool. They're sending a squad of six to go and compete in October, which will be a very cool race. Um, going forward now, the next championship is on August 17th. This is the USATF 50K Trail Championship, with which is in the Headlands, uh, located in Marin, California. There's no Team USA, or there's no more USA teams to make this year, uh, but you could earn yourself a podium spot or potentially a championship. But also just if you want to go run a fun 50K uh, out in the headlands, it's a beautiful race to run uh, out in Marin. And then after that, we have on September 28th, the USATF Marathon Trail Championships. It's only trail races going forward, MK, so this is your bread and butter. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Um, and that's in Hayward, Wisconsin, and that is at the Berkey Trail Festival. This is really cool because in the past they've uh mainly hosted the half marathon championships. It's gonna be a lot of grass, it's gonna be very rolly and hilly and probably multiple loops. Um, and maybe they're using what they use for cross-country skiing because I know they have a lot of races there. And then on November 2nd, so only a few days after that, so if you want another double hitter, uh, this is the USATF Half Marathon Trail. This is at Moab, so the Moab Half Marathon. They also had this race there last year in Moab, Utah, another beautiful place to be at in the fall. And then last but not least, uh, November 16th, you have the USATF 10-kilometer trail, so another trail race. This is a new distance for trail. Normally, it's just the half and the marathon and the 50K. And this is at Dirt Circus in Bentonville, Arkansas. I did that race last year. Highly recommend. Bentonville is a super cool place to check out. It seems like it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it's actually uh, just north of that other arc where the University of Arkansas. Fayetteville. Fayetteville. Yeah. So yeah. There, it's it's a very like booming community. Um, and it's a super fun course. Lots of like leaves and dirt and very rolly. Some very fast, potentially slippery bridges, but definitely a good time. Yeah, definitely booming. When uh, I was growing up in Arkansas, Bentonville was not a cool place to live. And now everybody I know lives in Bentonville. <laughs> yeah, why am I explaining this? You should be the one explaining this. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You've run there. <laughs> nice. Well, cool. yeah, sign yourself up for some U.S. championships. It's a ton of fun to get to compete. And maybe you'll get to call yourself a U.S. champion. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. And also just very approachable distances, great races that are supporting local community races here in the United States. Um, And yeah, just a lot of fun in general. So I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Um, Just as like a kind of housekeeping item, Danny and I will probably be putting out a little bit less um in this next month of july i guess we're already like halfway through it but um (laughs) we will kind of gear back up uh to hopefully put out a sears and all preview as well as an occ preview um but yeah we may not be coming out with episodes every other week partially because there's less racing going on right now but also because we're training hard (laughs) yep heads down training getting ready for it 
I have a couple new names for it. So the Chamonix Super Bowl, but I can see that being <laughs> controversial because the French would be like Americans trying to Americanize like UTMB Wake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was like, okay, that's fair. I wouldn't want someone like doing that. And then I thought of the Tour de Chamonix, mm. kind of like the Tour de France, because yeah. I personally I like I get why we call it UTMB Week, but it's O C C C C C UTMB Week. Yes. It has yes. a lot of letters to say. It is a lot of letters to say. I know I keep just, I keep calling it like whatever race I happen to be running week. Because <laughs> uh, in my head, it's about what I'm doing. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, if you have any suggestions, send us a message on potential other branding for that Chamonix week. I'm going to go tour to Chamonix right now because people do, it's like you're touring it. Yeah. And I mean, you get to go to a couple other places too, but like you spend a lot of time in sham probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, this has been the Subhub Podcast brought to you by Free Trail.